season's greetings as you can see it is very cold and foggy and a frosty morning this is how the garden's looking and what you can hear chirping away is the robin I'll see if I can get closer to him You can still hear the robin. Unfortunately, he's hiding amongst this pyracanthus, which is beautiful orange. That's the only colour left in my garden now. That'll hopefully keep the birds fed during this winter. You can see how the frost here has caught on the webs. Loving how it's caught the web there. Some of my Christmas lights are up and I don't know if you can make out the web all frosty. Poor old bird bath is frozen. I'll have to put some hot water in there. All cosy inside. I think she wants to come out now. Welcome to another video and I uh, hope you've enjoyed having a quick look at my garden. Here is my artwork, it's now back up on the wall. You may remember from my last video, I uh, took it all down because we were painting the walls and I was selecting it last time. I've just got one gap left that I've got space for and uh, you may remember this one. I haven't yet framed it so once that's framed, that will have a new home. Underneath my green man. So jobs are getting done around the house, but as you know, it's, it's Christmas time or the season is coming where festivities are happening for people around the world. Um, I haven't yet got my Christmas tree up or any of my decorations, just the outside lights in the garden and the advent calendar. Um, Oh, I'm going to be busy, so I'll just give you a quick video on what I intend to do. I'm going to be making a gift for my sister. So I will show you what I'm going to be intend to do, and then I shall be releasing that in January, having videoed it, hopefully, today. However, it's the uploading and the editing that takes the time, so that probably won't get done until I'm on the Christmas holiday break, because working at a school, flat out. So this will just be a short little video. So come over to, it's actually going to be my, my dining room because my desk is so cluttered at the moment. So I'm going to be um, sharing with you in the dining room today. As well as um, sewing and knitting and crocheting and all the rest of the textile types of art, I actually do keep photo albums and these are my 12 by 12s and they're called, they're like scrapbook albums. And this one is a holiday and I'm showing you this because this is the inspiration in which my item today is and I don't know if you can make a beautiful Highland cow out but we came across her whilst we were touring Scotland in our camp and Scotland's actually a whole day away and we usually have to stop over halfway up um, so we are quite some distance away having said that the cold today really does um, remind me of Scotland because it does get quite chilly up there. So there she is, 
beautiful, beautiful cow. So, the inspiration. As you know, I like to sketch, so I've then sketched her, and then I have turned her into a free motion embroidery. So here we go. Now this is my bag. Now the reason why I'm doing this for my sister is because she loved my bag and she said, oh, make me one, make me one. And so there's my Highland cow and um, with a tartan base, leather straps. Now I got some leather straps. I'm not sure yet whether I'll put leather straps on hers. I think it's going to be a case of it's getting quite close to Christmas. I'm not sure if I'll get the time. What I might do is um, pop into a local charity shop and find a belt um, and recycle a belt. But we'll see. We'll see how I get on. But anyway, so that's my free motion cow. So I'll take you on the journey of how I get to that point. What I've got here is a piece of um, canvas. It's not a thick canvas and it's not been treated. It was, believe it or not, um, a recycled curtain from Ikea. Ikea for a while did these curtains of just plain canvas. But I say it's medium weight, it's not particularly heavy. Um, so if I sew it, I might even put it in a ring or stabilise it. So and that's putting... A stabiliser is putting like a tear away or an interfacing of some sort that you can then remove or you can leave but I don't like to leave it because it makes it too rigid which is why I tend to use a ring instead. Now my cow, I'm going to draw freehand directly onto my fabric however if you want to have a go at doing something like this yourself um, there are methods whereby you can draw it on a piece of tear away for instance trace it off from a computer so you can download an image off the computer you can use a light box to draw it onto your tear away and then you can put your tear away on the top and you can stitch the basic outline and then you could just work the rest um, freestyle which is what I tend to do obviously some people aren't confident about doing that so when you come to find a, a drawing you like I recommend like a cartoon type drawing to start off with Anyway, um, another method you can also do, which I've seen, I think it's Stitch Bella did it, and I thought that was quite interesting, where she actually used that washable um, material that's quite transparent. So she drew it, then she then she washes it away, or she wets it, and then she removes it with the paper towel. Um, I have got some of that, but I still prefer doing freehand. So I've got to work out where I've got my drawing here. I've got my cow in front of me. I've got to work out where the nose of the, the cow is. I've got to remember I've got the seam allowances. So I've, got to, I've got to give myself at least, I don't know, 1.5, 2cm. Remember I've got that to go in. I've also got to come down. I've got horns coming in. So my nose, pretty low but sort of central. So I'm going to put my nose here. So I'm just looking at drawing. Got that lovely, I love their nose. Chubby back bottom lip. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. Might zoom in a little bit for you. Hang on. So there's my my mouth. I don't need to put too many lines on because I'm going to be drawing it in with the pen. And then I've got um, the nostrils to go in. So we're going to have nostrils will be there like that. And then I think I'll have to zoom back out for you. You might struggle to see what I'm drawing there. That's my only concern. Coming up here, I want the top of the head around here. So that's quite um, got some bits coming down. I'm going to have an eye showing. Even though there's no eyes showing on my photographs, I think it does give the cow a little bit of character. So I'm going to have an eye just there, and that will be filled in by a little fraction. So that will be heavily stitched in. Again, I don't know if you can see what I've just drawn. Come back out a little bit. 
So then I've got the horn, which I want to come up top here. The horn sort of come in like that. They thicken up at the bottom as they come in. And the same on the other side. Come up. Oh no, I'm going to come out a little bit first and then come up. I should have my straps in here somewhere. Now this, I should have said this pen, I don't know if you can see it, this pen actually is one of these, um, you iron them away to remove them. Now they do have really fluffy ears, so I pop the ear in. Again, I'm not sure if you can see that. You'll see better when I start sewing, I think. There's another ear just in here. But they're quite shaggy, so I'm going to put some shag marks down there. And I've got some lines coming down here. And then the shoulders are just coming off. Right, so I don't suppose you can see that brilliantly. But there's the snout, there's the eye, I've got two ears, and I've got the two horns. So it's all quite very simple, the mouth, not put too much detail in because I'm going to do that with the stitching when I come to stitch. Right, let's get the sewing machine out. Before I start stitching, let me just go back to the one I first did. Um, it's built up of different coloured threads, so I've got um, very dark brown, which is the main outlines. I've got a lighter grey and then a darker grey for the actual depth and shading that I wanted to create. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the needle like I would a pencil. So I'm just going to be drawing basically with my needle. And you can see here where I've created a dark edge and then a, a light, lighter edge but still shaded with the grey and then the, where I've left it, where the canvas is exposed, it gives it that sort of 3D effect. So I shall be doing that. So I need to go and get, I've got the sewing machine, so I need to go and get the threads. Okay, for those of you who may remember, oh, some videos back now. My machine was uh, jamming and causing problems. I've just got it back from the service guys and uh, at Silver, it's a silver sewing machine. Um, so it went to the, the warehouse and the technicians there very kindly got my machine up and running and balanced properly. So that's a relief. Um, yeah, so let me crack on, let me fill up the machine and uh, we'll get sewing. Okay, the free motion foot, or embroidery foot, darning foot, whatever you want to call it, depending on your um, brand of machine or who you buy your foot from. Uh, I like this one, it's nice and big. It allows me to see what I'm doing. Um, it's got a nice spring system here. So that can be a bit noisy, the spring, I'm gonna be honest, um, but I don't mind that. And then my dog teeth are down. So if you haven't done this before, I recommend you look back at one of my videos which is called, um, I think it's called Beginners in Pre-Motion Embroidery. Um, if I can put a ticket in here I'll try. Um, so anyway, the needle, I don't know, they, they in the servicing they probably changed it back to a regular needle. I'm going to try it. If it's the needle I left in it, it was an embroidery needle, it doesn't look like it's the same needle because the eye is smaller. I prefer the embroidery needles. Or the metallic uh, needles because they have a larger eye but anyway it doesn't matter for now I shall just see how it runs as I say it obviously is a brand new needle because it's, it's been serviced or it's the one I put in it I'm going to pop my single layer of canvas into a frame ideally as I say you'd use some tear away um, we'll start with the nose and I'm just going to sketch in the basic lines. So let me pop that under my frame. 
van de leeg. Using my original bag as a reference, you can't really see it. It's out of camera shot, but it's just next to me here. I'm going to grab that needle thread. Where's that thread? There it is. I'm going to turn the balance wheel to pick up a stitch below. Lower my foot because if I don't lower my foot, the tension isn't squeezing. And the number of times you end up with bird's nest because you forget to lower the teeth is. Well, I've lost count of the number of times I've done that. Right, it should pick up. Now, in my case, it doesn't pick up. I keep forgetting. I've gone back to my new my silver. With the Janome, it does let me pick it up. This one can start from zero. I'm going to do a couple of stitches quite close together to begin with, just so it secures it. And then I'm going to start moving around, following my line. So that's the edge of the nose. Uh, I'm now going to start adding the shadows. Doesn't matter if I leave gaps at the moment, I'm just getting a rough idea of where I want the shadow to be. And then I'll fill it in. Is the first nostril completed? I'm going to repeat on this side, then I'm going to sew around with the nose and then the mouth, and we'll build it up slowly. I don't need to cut it off, I can trim it up afterwards. I want quite a sketchy look.
Now I hope you can see that I've gone around several times and it doesn't matter if your stitching is all over the place because it's all part of the sketchy look about it. And not only that, when you go over wobbly lines and you go over it several, several times, you kind of build up a nice thick line. Because where you've missed on one rotation, if you're not on your pencil line accurately, it doesn't really seem to matter because you can almost make it up on the next stitch round. So I'm going to carry on. you've enjoyed watching this so far I'm gonna carry on um, you might get to see a bit more we'll see I might leave the video running you might want to forward it because I can't change the speed on my video maker even though it's an Adobe Photoshop film editor suite I haven't yet I've gone through the whole menu system and I've even googled it I can't seem to find any way of speeding up my videos um, when I do, you'll be pleased, I think. <laughs> right, I'm going to crack on. some different shading into there now. 
what I would normally do, I'm going to show you how I do the shading. What I would normally do is I would do the whole cow um, in the dark colour first. Um, but I think I might just change up, do my little bit of shading here. I might even do the shading on the on the nose just to show you how it looks. I've changed my needle to the very lightest grey. I've left the bobbin. The, the bobbin is going to be entirely the mid-tone grey. I don't want to keep changing it up. So you can see here it's mid-grey. Mid if your machine's balanced correctly, your top thread should go down, which is why I'm pleased that this has been serviced because it now means I've got a better top stitch. So I'm going to start and I'm going to just shade in around the eyeball. I'm going in the direction of a sphere to make it look more rounded. And I'm just colouring it in. And that should be enough. I hope you can see that. When I iron this, that blue mark will go away. So now I'm going to move over to back over to the nose. And I'm going to use the light tones. You, it won't really matter whether you use the light tones or the dark tones first. Um, so I'm put some lighter tones. So it's, it's to indicate some shadowing, but not the darkest of shadows. I'm just putting sketchy bits in. Uh, as I said, this is the lighter tone, so I'm going to put the lighter tone slightly higher up. I'm visualising in my head where the dark tones will blend in in a minute. If you find that happens with your machine, you need to turn your work around for a fraction. Okay, and you can work from side to side. Shadowing again. This is the lighter shadow. I'm going to put some of the darker shadow in between this and that darker outline. They're going on there. I might also put a little bit inside here in the mouth. Again, there'll be a mid tone. Join those together. Hopefully you can see there's some shadowing going on. The gap here will be the darker shadow. So I'm going to thread up and uh, change the mid-tone. So we've got the dark tone and we've got the lightest tone. You don't have to work like this. You can go dark tone, mid-tone, light tone. I've just happened to go on that way because of, I've just moved to the eye which didn't need the mid-tone. Right, one of the biggest problems with... Um, free most embroidery is remembering when to lift and lower your foot because you can see look currently now it doesn't matter I'm lifting and lowering but there's no difference currently because my needle's up so when you change your thread it's really important that you make sure your foot is lifted even though it doesn't look lifted or lowered it's if, if it's not lifted your tension discs aren't open to take the new thread so that when you do lower it which I'm lowering it now um, the thread is now being squeezed under tension and that's usually where a lot of people make the mistake and that's where you get birds nesting underneath as I say I haven't bothered to cut from previously 
So technically my bobbit should still be underneath and active. This is where I find out whether it is or not. I'm just adding the mid-tones now. Just putting in the top of his nose. A little bit shadowing on there. There's only so far you can go before you think to yourself, I'm going to have to cut this thread because it's in my way. So, let me cut that thread. I'm going to cut some other threads too. And I'm going to move down. And when you do move, don't forget to lift your foot back up. And then when you're back into position, remember to put your foot back down. When I say your foot, I don't mean your foot, I mean the sewing machine's foot, just to clarify. Now what I'm doing now is I'm joining up the darker tones with the lighter tones and I'm trying to keep it directional so it looks kind of 3D. So I'm trying to sort of do it as if I'm sketching, curving it as if I'm sketching it to make it look like bulbous, like it's coming out at me. I'm just sort of trying to blend in, blend the toes together, the lighter tone and the darker tone. Again, you can see distinctly here because I've got light and then I've got dark and I'm moving from one to the other to join them together to blend them. And okay, I'm doing it on the bottom edge here. So it's just the bottom edge of his lip. I'm just drawing the darker marks with the lighter marks. Again, trying to get a direction to it, make it look fleshy, rounded. I could go across it once if I'm not happy and go back again. I think I'm there, I think I'm there. So let me take that out and let me show you how that's looking. And hopefully you can see, let me just zoom in a little bit for you. Hopefully you can see how it's building up. Now I will have to turn the camera off because the power's about to go and I've got a lot more to do. So I'll come back and I'll hopefully show you how far I've got.